Hello and welcome to this gouache tutorial where I'm going to be showing you how I'm painting a 8 by 10 inch coastal scene on cold press illustration board. The original photo was taken in Big Sur. I did a road trip there and the coastline was just beautiful. So this is kind of a zoomed up photo of the coast. Now, what drew me to this photo was the atmospheric cliffs in the back and the really high contrast rocks in the midground. The tricky part about this is that I want to make the midground rocks a little bit more exciting than they look in the photo. I want to see if I can play with colors in the shadow and not just, and also in the light, right? Not just have that kind of pale yellowish rock tone. So let's see how this painting turns out. Definitely is a challenge. Right now I've toned my canvas and you can see that I've actually sketched out my painting using pencil and I have some grids overlaid on top to help me with composition. Now grids is a really great, great way to help you compose. I cover this in my digital painting mentorships and it just helps me be more aware and intentional of where I'm placing my most important elements of my painting, my focal point, and it helps me design with intention. Now obviously things are going to be covered up as I paint, but it really, really helps me get a nice foundational lay in when I sketch it out with pencil first versus going right into it and painting right away. So as you can see right now, I'm blocking in a relatively light, pretty transparent layer for my first pass. I really want to just block in that big mass of atmospheric rocks in the back. They feel so blue and I just love the hints of light touching those rocks in the back. And I really want to make sure I capture that contrast in those atmospheric rocks and the foreground rocks. Now the foreground or midground rocks are going to be pretty tricky because there's lots of little grooves in them. And this was taken probably during mid-ish day or early afternoon. So it feels like pretty top-down-ish lighting. And that's always lighting that I feel is pretty tricky. So right now I'm just trying to make sense of how I'm going to design and organize those shadow shapes, right? It's really, really going to be dependent on design. This painting is going to be dependent on how I compose my light and shadow shapes. So that's why I really want to make sure that I'm designing with intention. I'm not just putting shapes down willy nilly and I'm using my flat brush like I always do to really capture those graphical shapes first. I'm not, I'm not going to just kind of throw down things without thinking because I'm just going to have to pay for it afterwards, right? If I don't really plan ahead in the beginning, I basically spend more time paying for my mistakes and paying for my lack of planning afterwards. And that's where grids come in handy too, right? When I take the time to compose with grids, I'm really laying the strong foundational work. So I'm not fixing and guessing and huffing and puffing and problem solving ineffectively later on. Now things are going to look pretty abstract in the beginning because I'm going to try to use a tone of my paper or of my canvas for the light side. Now, I apologize, it's a little bit cut off here. I wasn't aware that my camera had cut off the bottom part, but I'm just trying to block in those smaller rocks in the foreground. Now, there is a little bit that I want to redesign. I want to try to make the white part of the water, that froth coming in, I want to try to make that more of an S-curve to lead your eye more into the painting. So right now in the photo reference, they're kind of streaks of white, right? I want to try to redesign that. And that leads me to a really good point where when you're painting from a photo, you don't always have to copy every single thing that's in that photo, right? Your job as a, an artist is to take what's in front of you, redesign it and make it better. Nature provides you with inspiration, but you can always choose what to take away and what to add in, right? So I'm constantly thinking about that because it's really easy to get into that mindset of like, oh, whatever it's in front of me, I'm going to copy. 
but that's not always the case and it shouldn't always be the case. I like to say that restraint is sometimes more important than profusely adding things in, right? Being selective is a skill that can be more important than knowing how to paint really well or knowing how to copy really well. Knowing how to copy really well will get you only so far. Knowing how to select what goes in your painting, what doesn't go with, with your painting is next level skill, right? So that's what I'm going to tr try to do in this painting and in every other painting, to be honest. So right now, the painting still looks quite abstract. We can't really make out what's going on. But as soon as I start adding in the water, you're going to see how the rocks are going to be carved out, right? Essentially, because we're putting a darker value down. So we're bringing out the rocks in that way. So sometimes you don't have to paint every single thing, right? You, you By effectively leaving the tone of the paper, I can paint out other things in order to reveal other things, if that makes sense. I've just squeezed out some sky blue and I should go over my colors that I have now. I'm working with a relatively limited palette. So I have, starting from the left, I have white, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, alizarin blue, sky blue, and then on top of that, I have a little bit of cobalt turquoise. Just because the water in that area, Carmel by the Sea and the Big Sur Coast is so blue and so beautiful, so turquoisey. So I knew that I needed to have a little bit of that special, exciting color to kind of really bring out the vibrancy of the water. And that's why I squeezed out a little bit of that cobalt turquoise. So you're going to see now I'm using my flat brush and I'm just blocking in the water, being careful to carve around my rock, right? I don't want to cut into the rock, try not to at least. And I'm still painting relatively thin right now. I like to do a thin wash first to sort of evaluate my values, evaluate my shapes, my my masses. And then when that's kind of all blocked in, I'll pretty much go ahead and start painting pretty dry brushy and pretty thick. That's my method of painting with gouache. Not everyone paints that way. So um, I have a very, um, very opaque way of painting with gouache, almost like oil. And I know that I need to mix a lot of color with that water because it is such a big area to cover. Now, I'm not going to be too careful about where to leave the white area of the white part of the water, the froth or whatever you call it, because I'm probably going to go back into that with thicker paint and block that in as well. So right now I'm just darkening the water of the foreground just to bring a little bit more depth to the painting. And um, now you can already start to see where my rocks are and basically where the area of highest contrast is going to be, right? I want to make sure my value relationships are going to be congruent with my vision. So if this is going to be my overall value structure, I need to stay true to that, right? I can't suddenly start lightening only one part of my painting. If I do that, I need to lighten the whole thing, right? In order to maintain the value structure. So right now I'm still sort of trying to figure that all out. And you can see, see, I'm not being super careful, right? I'm not, I mean, I'm trying to be careful, but I'm also not being too obsessive in a way. I just want to block in. I just want to get the whole thing, the feeling of the painting in kind of as fast as I can so I can really quickly gauge the relationships with everything. Now, I don't mean to be careless, though. I never want to try to be careless. I think there's a difference. I'm still thinking and actively engaging with my painting. That doesn't mean I'm careless, right? So I'm constantly assessing and seeing what is working that I'm putting down and what needs to be fixed. You can see I'm doing a bunch of variations in the color and some in, of the ocean. In some areas, I'm adding a little bit of more turquoise, cobalt turquoise, in some areas, a little bit more sky blue. And in some areas in the foreground, I'm adding more ultramarine and a little bit of yellow ochre just to desaturate that blue a little bit. That's going to give me different variations of blue 
in this while everything is still water, right? So I'm not just sticking to one kind of blue. I'm already shifting slight temperature within my hue family of the umbrella of blue. So some cooler blue in the fort in the background with cobalt and some warmer blues with ultramarine in the foreground, right? So I'm trying to create depth that way as well. I'm not just picking one blue and just putting that down. I'm already trying to get subtle temperature variation in the water that way. Now, as you can see, I'm starting to block in my fort, my focal point, those rocks. And this part can be kind of scary because I'm almost afraid to, I guess, lose that simple graphicness that I have. And this is going to be tricky just because there's so many textures going on and my job is to hopefully not get distracted by all that texture and still be able to see the big picture. So right now I'm just putting down a darker yellow ochre because the, you know, the rocks down there are a little are a little bit darker actually because the tops of the rocks I think are covered in bird poop and that's why they're a little bit lighter. So um, there's this kind of subtle gradient going on in the rocks from light to dark because there's so much bird poop. But like I said before, I don't want to just stick with this boring-ish, you know, yellow for the rocks, like yellow ochre mixed with white. I really want to try to play with different slight different variations in hue. So you can see right now, I'm already putting down this kind of yellowish color with cobalt blue and a little bit of lemon yellow and white while making sure my values are more or less okay. 